Hi, this is the video for Chapter 14, Media Freedom, Regulation, and Ethics. And we're going through some of the exceptions to the First Amendment, which, although it says Congress shall make no law abridging freedom of speech, basically, there are exceptions. So we're looking at that list of exceptions, and we're now going to cover one of those exceptions, libel. And we're going to get into this more in class because this is a really important issue. Um, and it's become a lot more important in recent times as you guys have been engaging with social media. When I was younger, when I was your age, um, if you weren't a journalist, you might not ever come up against some of this stuff or it'd be a lot more rare. And um, I think it's, it is now something you really do need to know about. So when we're talking about libel, the first thing I want to say is that we are um, we're talking about libel as an umbrella word, um, and underneath that umbrella word is libel and slander. Slander has to do with broadcast or, or spoken um, defamation, so, uh, and libel has to do with written um, defamation. So both of those things we're going to be using the, the umbrella term libel for, okay? So when we're talking about libel, know that we're talking about both types of um, libelous or uh, defaming uh, speech or incidents. Okay, so what is it? Here are the characteristics of it. First of all, what is being written or published or broadcast defames someone. It uh, ruins the reputation, it injures them in that sort of way. Second thing is that it, it, it identifies the person. Now, we're going to talk in class a little bit more about what we mean when we say identifies the person, so know that this is not, it may not be as straightforward as it comes across in this, and we'll be discussing some of that a little bit more. Third characteristic is that the work is published. So that can mean, um, you know, it's published in a newspaper, or it's broadcast on television, or whatever. Um, it can also mean some other things, so we'll talk about that in class too, but basically now we have de defamation, it identifies a person and it, the defamation is published. The fourth characteristic is that it's false. Now, I'm giving you really broad strokes here. If you ever do take a media law class, you're going to see that when we say false, um, who the onus is on, is it on the person to prove that they weren't li libeling somebody or is, it on, is the responsibility on the person who is making the claim that they've been injured? I'm not going to get into all of that. I'm really simplifying it, and you can explore this further if law is your thing. But essentially, if the thing that you're talking about or you've written about is true, it's not libel. If it's false and these other characteristics are also there, then you might have some trouble. All right, how do you defend yourself if somebody says you've libeled them? Well, the number one way to defend yourself is truth. Again, if what you've said is true, it is not libel, no matter how bad what you're saying might be. There's also something called privilege. This is a little bit complicated. Um, not so complicated, but there's something called absolute and qualified privilege, and we're going to talk more about this in class. Um, your book covers this not quite the same way that I do, and again, we're dealing with legal issues, and I'm just breaking it down really simply for you. But essentially, absolute privilege refers to people who are in sort of what I call sacred arenas, um, a court of law, the floor of Congress. People can say things, and they won't be... Um, they, they can't get in trouble for libel in those moments. And the idea behind it is that with a democracy, we need these sacred arenas where we can have free and unfettered debate without being fearful that we're going to libel somebody in the process. Now, you'll see when we talk about it in class, that doesn't mean that it's a free-for-all on you, you know in the court of law or on the floor of Congress. You can't just say anything you want. But you're not going to get in trouble for libel. You might get in trouble for something else, but not libel. Qualified privilege refers to those people who are um, maybe, you know, like the press, that are witnesses to what's going on in the court or um, aren't quite participants but are kind of there. Uh, you might get protection against libel depending on how you write about it. So we'll talk more about that in class too. But you have to be really restrained about how you refer to what experiences have gone on at that in those sacred arenas. You can't just spout off 
and repeat libelous material and hope to be protected. A third defense is fair comment and criticism. And when we talk about this in class, you're going to really see that this is really related to the types of things that you do online. So if you're venturing opinions about a restaurant, or et cetera, are you covered by fair comment and criticism? Let's hope that you are. In most cases, you probably are. As long as you understand now what libel is, you're probably OK. One more thing to add about all of this. You may be wondering, I always get the question every year, you know, how can magazines or tabloids write about certain people who are famous and write stuff that clearly is not true? So how that happens is that there's an additional level of responsibility when you make a claim um, against a journalist or somebody um, if, if you're saying that they've libeled somebody who's in the public eye. We need to have a environment where the press or other people can criticize those people who are in the public eye, those people especially in power, but also celebrities and things like that. And so um, in those cases, somebody who's been injured and says, you know, I've been libeled, if they're famous or they're in the public eye, they're going to have to show that the, the person who libeled them had actual malice, meaning that the person who libeled them, the journalist or, or whatever, really abandoned all protocol on how we do um, ethically sound reporting, that they didn't check their sources. They just, you know, they, they just essentially said, oh, I heard this about this person. I'm going to write it without double checking anything. But and so that's why it's hard sometimes for celebrities and other people who are in the public eye. It's harder for them to successfully sue somebody for libel because um, as long as that reporter or other type of person who has libeled them has really tried to double check on the information, even if it's false, they've, they've done due dil diligence. So um, that, that makes it harder if you're in the public eye to sue for a case of libel. All right, we'll definitely be talking about this one more. It's a really important issue.